join me today looking at two similar but still very different cars. Now, when I say they're similar, they're both around the same price. They're in that twenty-five to thirty thousand pound bracket. They're both limited edition. And they're also both very, very orange. I've got the Mazda MX-5 30th Anniversary Edition, which I'm sitting in now. This is my car. And I've also got the Ford Fiesta ST Performance Edition. Let's get the obvious differences out of the way. The Fiesta has four seats to the MX-5 too, and a much bigger boot. Of course, while the Fiesta is the more practical machine of the two, the MX-5's obvious party piece is its roof. In this case, demonstrated on the hardtop RF model. Mechanically, the major differences come with the engine and drivetrains. The Fiesta has a three-cylinder 1.5-litre engine and is front-wheel drive, while the MX-5 has a four-cylinder 2-litre engine and is rear-wheel drive. So, what's the deal with these special editions? Well, first off, they're only available in the bright oranges you see before you and those colours are not available in any other models in their respective lineups. Just 600 of the Fiestas were made, and they were released only into the UK market. For the MX-5, they made 3,000 available worldwide, with 550 of them finding their way to the UK. Of the 550, 370 are traditional soft top, and 180 are the hardtop RF variant like this one. So, let's take a look at the upgrades the ST comes with. This performance edition builds on the ST3 while adding a limited slip differential, launch control and a shift light. Revised suspension drops the ride height by 10 mils at the front and 15 at the rear. It also offers manual adjustment. New, lighter, 18 inch wheels knock 7 kilos off the car's weight. Meanwhile, the engine is untouched. With the MX-5, you get 17 inch forged raised alloys, specific to this model only, and engraved with 30th anniversary edition. Like the Fiesta, there are no engine tweaks, but you do get some rather nice colour-coded Brembo brakes on the front. To remind you it's a limited edition, you also get an individually numbered plaque mounted on the driver's side. Inside, there's a generous smattering of Alcantara across the dashboard and door panels, and the generic seats have been switched out for some rather excellent Recaro ones. Aside from that, both cars retain the same decent standard of equipment enjoyed by their high-spec relations. It will come as no surprise that the Fiesta has a lot more storage capacity. It has 292 litres of room in the boot compared to 130 litres in the MX-5 and the Fiesta's figure jumps to 1,093 litres once the rear seats are put down. OK, let's take a look at the interiors. So, nice improvement over the previous generation ST that I drove, to be honest. Got a much bigger infotainment screen here. And I guess, since we're comparing this to the MX-5, I should point out that there's a lot more in the way of storage. I mean, you don't even get a glove box in the MX-5. Although, when you open that, it does remind you that there's a big space here for a CD player, which is an optional extra, which is a little bit cheekier Ford, I think. While I'm here, I could probably show you this, which is the, uh, the coilover suspension adjusting kit, which you can adjust that on the, on the Fiesta. That's all it is, really. Nothing too exciting to look at, but a uh, pretty cool thing to have if you're into adjusting that sort of thing. So, inside the MX-5, pretty nice place to be. I already mentioned the Alcantara, so you'll see it here across the dashboard and also on the door panels, etc. Now, I mentioned the storage capacity, which is limited in here. There's no, There are no pockets in the doors. There's, there's no glove box under here. What you do get is you get some storage there you also get some storage behind just sitting behind the two seats there notably there's a cd player like you don't get in the fiesta st uh, there's also some storage behind these seats as well so the, the, the storage scattered around although it's not as plentiful as you'd find in a bigger car one thing that's worth mentioning here the difference between this and the st is you have the infotainment screen now, it's pretty much touchscreen only in the ST, whereas it's touchscreen here as well, but you also have this control cluster down here. Very similar to a sort of a BMW iDrive system, which, which works extremely well. And personally, I much prefer it over what you find in the ST. The first thing that's evident getting into this Fiesta ST is that the driving position is much higher than that in the MX-5, which should come as no surprise, being as the MX-5 is pretty much a go-kart. The next thing is the power delivery, where in this, it's a relatively small 1.5 litre three-cylinder engine. 
but it's turbocharged and as such delivers quite a lot more torque than the MX-5 and that's very noticeable, especially down at low revs. Another thing that is quite apparent quite early on is the suspension. I drove a previous generation ST and it struggled to get the power down in the wet. There was a lot of juddering from the front end. Whereas this, with the performance pack fitted, has the Quake limited slip diff and it's evident that it's working well in this car. It gets the power down well. It's not struggling like it used to in the previous generation. If you're anything like me, climbing into an MX-5, you're gonna make all sorts of old man grunting and groaning noises. But once you're in position, it's actually pretty comfortable. I won't go as far as to say spacious, but it's certainly more spacious than it looks like from the outside looking in. And once in, you're into these Recaro seats, which are really comfortable. Personally, I prefer them over the ones in the ST, which are quite aggressive and more hugging, less, uh, more restrictive. But your opinion might vary because it's a very subjective uh, feature of the car. One thing you'd never think before you get into the cars is the, the difference in view you get down the road. Obviously, you're a lot lower here, but in the Fiesta, you can't see any of the bonnet. You see the top of the dashboard and then that's it, and then just road in front of you. Whereas in the MX-5 here, as you can see now, there's a very nice contoured view of the road ahead of you, which is very nice. I mentioned the difference in power deliveries before, and one of those reasons is the fact that the Fiesta is turbocharged and, and has more torque. But this, crucially, revs to 7,500 RPM, which is an extra 1,000 RPM over the Fiesta. Consequently, it's, it's an engine that likes to be hammered. It likes to be thrashed. It likes to be kept up near the top of that rev range, which makes it a pretty entertaining drive. Now, if you couple that with a difference in the drivetrain, the Fiesta's a front-wheel drive, and well, as I mentioned, that the limited slip diff does a very good job of keeping that in check. There's simply no getting away from the fact that a rear-wheel drive car is a more entertaining drive. This too has a limited slip diff, but in lovely weather like we have in the UK, and it's starting to start to rain now, uh, this could be an extremely entertaining drive coming out of bends in the damp with that back end wanting to, wanting to twitch, for want of a better phrase. Makes it quite a fun car to drive. Okay, let's take a listen to these two cars. It'll quickly become evident that Ford have spent some time in the lab perfecting the sound that they get from the Fiesta ST, whereas Mazda haven't. The Ford does introduce some artificial pops and bangs and things which are very popular now, but I don't think they've done a bad job of it. It's not it's not intrusive at all, really. Uh, personally, I prefer the sound of the ST, but you make up your own mind. After that, we'll do an example launch control so you can see what that's like. I summarise these cars. In truth, it's pretty difficult. I mean, they are very different cars. If you need two rear seats and plenty of luggage space, then chances are you're not going to be looking at a Mazda MX-5, let's be honest. But if you want a car where the roof comes off and you only need two seaters, maybe just for a weekend car or you, you, don't, have, you don't need all that capacity, then maybe this is the car for you. At the end of the day, they're both fantastic cars to drive. There's, there's no argument there. They've got slightly different characteristics, which I've been through, but you will have great fun no matter which one of these you drive. And on that rather ambiguous note, I'm going to leave you there. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.